All right, hey YouTube and Facebook. So it's about 9.30 in the morning today, but I wanted to get in a live show, an update on a few different things in this particular video. I keep wanting to look in this direction because that's where I'm used to having the camera, but it's actually over there. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'm going to be covering a few different things today. The biggest reason is actually the reason why this live stream is first thing in the morning, which is today I'm going to be getting my COVID booster. Now I wasn't actually intending on getting my COVID booster so quickly. I have been pretty vocal on Twitter about how I have been quite hesitant about getting this booster, but being that I work with the public now, I have changed my mind on the booster and had to really think about whether I was going to actually get this COVID booster. So I want to talk about the reasons why I've decided to do that. I will be vlogging my experience like I did for shots one and two, and that will be included in the Christmas vlog that I hope to get up next week when I have a little bit more time. Okay, so. COVID booster. I also want to talk about what being extremely stable with migraines is like, because that's the situation that I'm in. And this feeds into a hypothesis that I actually have with IIH and honestly migraines as well. So with IIH and migraines, I honestly believe the two are connected for me. Before I had IIH, I didn't really ever have headaches. Headaches weren't a really big thing unless I got a sinus infection. So with that being said, I have a hypothesis that is actually, I don't know if it's really backed up by any of the literature that I've read on this, but it makes sense to me because of what Amavig targets. So my hypothesis is something that I think I'm going to get into right away and then I'll end with the COVID booster stuff maybe. Actually, no, I'm gonna get into the booster stuff now and I'll end with the stuff on my hypothesis. That's the order I put this in. It was in random order, the random order I came up with it in, but I guess, yeah. Okay. I might be glancing back and forth here as I've got my YouTube and Facebook being recorded. So let's get into why I wanted to get this booster. So I made it pretty obvious on Twitter, which if you guys kind of want to follow me and the random thoughts that I have every day, follow me on Twitter because I've been very hesitant on getting the booster. There's been multiple reasons, but I think the biggest reason for me is because the first and second doses of the COVID shot, which I got the Moderna vaccine, were very rough on me. The first shot, not as much, but it was still quite rough. The second dose actually knocked me out for a couple of days. And I don't mean like physically where I passed out or anything. It was just really hard on me. It was one of the hardest vaccines I think I've had since HPV. HPV was also a really difficult one. I had that one when I was 15 and it was quite difficult with the HPV shot because it was also brand new and it was like a pretty decent punch to the arm. So with that being said, the reason why I've decided to get my booster is I work with the public constantly. I work with the public all the time. So, and I also work in an essential job where it would never get shut down. I'm where I work is an essential workplace. So with the recent news on Omicron, I'm not I have to be honest, I'm not really that worried about the new variant, but with the fact that I do work with the public, I know there's a good chance I'm gonna be exposed. And so why not 
have the best protection possible. Also that, but I do have close family members who are, I would can say, either medically vulnerable or immunocompromised. And if there's a way of trying to keep COVID at the lowest possible exposure rate for those people in my life, I'm more than willing to do it for them. Okay. So that's basically my two major reasons. This really isn't for me. I'm just getting this booster because I, of where I work and what I do and all of that. And, you know, it's, it wasn't a hard decision. It wasn't as hard as what I thought. Like, I didn't really go back and forth all that much like I thought I might. But it was still a little bit of sitting for a couple of hours on like the first couple of doses, which were pretty honestly, pretty easy. So I get my shot this afternoon, which is why I'm doing this live stream right now. So I usually do these live streams in the afternoon because it's when I'm most awake and most alert. It's kind of right after lunch these days because I don't know if you can tell, but the lighting isn't great in here. It's because the sun basically is not up until like nine o'clock at this time of year also happy solstice everyone happy summer solstice to those of you in the southern hemisphere and happy winter solstice for those of us in the northern hemisphere bright side days start getting longer after today <laughs> so i like to think of the positive and that's definitely a positive thing okay so i will be vlogging my booster symptoms as much as I can. I am supposed to work tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be able to continue doing that. I unfortunately had to book this at a not so ideal time just because of my schedule. All of the appointments available I was at work. So yeah, there's that. And so I had to book it at a not so ideal time. <laughs> but I'm hoping to vlog it as much as possible and even still like I only update a couple of times usually during throughout the day or if something weird happens so that'll be a part of my Christmas vlog that will be up next week hopefully I'm hoping to have more time to do it next weekend so Friday Saturday Sunday maybe even a little bit earlier get a few extra days off next week because of less hours so that's hopeful Okay, so that's the COVID booster. Now, the thing I wanna get into, sorry, I'm just got notes on my computer because it's early in the morning and my memory is not that great. And plus I am a bit tired being that it's been a crazy couple of weeks. So I did just get off of a really long stretch and all of that from work. And that's kind of what the story was that I shared this morning. I came up with that after I basically went and said, this is too much. People around me were saying, oh, well, you have a long stretch, you got a lot of hours, but think of the money you're gonna make. And money is important in this world, but your mental and physical health is honestly a lot more important. So that's where I was getting at with sharing that. And that's kind of what I wanna get into now with this issue of I'm extremely stable but what does that mean with still being I would say active with migraines even though I'm look and feel fairly normal most of the time there's still days of course right there's still times where I'm struggling and what does this mean well as I keep saying to people constantly there's no cure for migraines there's you can find a preventative that often works really well and that's the point where i'm at with amavig but that doesn't mean that you're not still having bad days and it doesn't mean that you don't have to take care of yourself in fact i think looking after your mental physical emotional health is more important when you get diagnosed with a chronic illness than previously and I don't think it's more important I just think it becomes more of a priority because you're forced to make those changes you're forced to basically put yourself first because if you don't you have less in your tank in order to get through that I think also as well with having migraines and IIH 
it's forced me to look at things differently. So it's forced me to really consider what's important in my life, what's really important to do every day because I've been given the limitations. It doesn't mean that you can't do the things that you want to do, it just means that you basically have to do them in a different way. And I've said that many times before. Migraines are forever, but that doesn't mean that I'm not happy either. I'm extremely happy. Looking back and seeing where I was even a year ago, it's amazing the progress that I've had. I don't think it's going to get much better than what it is right now in terms of my health wise. I don't think it's going to get much stable, more stable than what it is right now. But you know, I am a lot more happy and I think I'm happy because I feel like I'm able to be a functioning member of society. That going from being in university to being able to basically do nothing was one of the most difficult things mentally I think I've had to accept. It was emotionally difficult too. Like at the start it was really nice because you got a break. A break that I probably really needed because I was struggling for so many months at that time. But then the opposite happened where it was just like, I'm not happy with this. I want to be able to do things with my day. I want to be able to do the things that I enjoy. And I don't want to be stuck on the couch all day. Contrary to popular belief by family members who just don't understand or even friends that don't understand, it's not lollipops, rainbows, sunshine, when you get to stay home all day. It might be okay for the first week, but then when it drags into month three or four, it's really frustrating, particularly if you have a certain personality where if you're not doing something or accomplishing something, you're feeling like you're a failure. And that's exactly how I felt. And So being able to hold down different things, being able to make plans and stick with them now is one of the things I've desired for so long. And it's one of the things that people I think take for granted a lot of the times. So yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at. And I am extremely stable, but it doesn't mean that I don't have bad days. I am almost a pro at hiding how I'm really feeling, especially at work. It's one of those things I don't really talk about much at work. It's not something I even like to bring up because there is a stigma with migraines and there is a stigma associated with people really don't just understand unless they have them. So the only people I really feel comfortable with talking about migraines with are those I've heard that also miss work or miss functions because of migraines. And if what they're truly having is a migraine, a lot of people will just call a severe headache a migraine. And I really wish people wouldn't do that. Okay, so word of advice to those of you who use interchange severe headache with migraines, please stop doing this. A migraine is a completely different thing than a severe headache. It involves a lot more than a headache. So as I've mentioned before, I get sensitivity to smell and sound. I get, it's it's more than a headache. It's more than a severe headache. If I also get issues with my vision. So there'll be, you know, changes to my vision in that period of time or the time preceding the actual pain. And my migraines are a lot different now than what they used to be because the pain a lot of the time isn't there because you've got the thing where it's the, so with the pain, because that's what the Amovig is working on with that particular pathway, the pain sometimes isn't there even though I'm getting all these other symptoms. And I've talked about that in, in videos before the changes that I've had from pre amovig to post amovig with the migraines. And I think that's really important to emphasize. Although the pain might not be there, there's a lot more to the migraine than just the headache and the pain. 
it's a part that can be particularly debilitating, but doesn't mean it's the only part of a migraine. And the headache definitely is just a small part of the migraine. I can have a full body involvement when it comes to the migraine, although it mostly involves the vision and the, and the senses and all of that. So other senses as well. So I think that's really important that I'm gonna still have bad days and I still do have bad days and I can tell you exactly when I'm having a bad day, but it's a different type of bad day than what it was pre Amivig where you get to the point where you're stuck in bed all day. Like I find with the Amivig now that I'm feeling it, but it's not to the point where I can't function. So it's really weird because I'm still able to function, but I can tell that not being on the Amivig would mean that particular day is a complete write-off, which is, you know, wonderful in a sense, but it's also, in my opinion, not so great because in some ways, you don't know when you should be resting. You don't know what, when you're actually to the point where you're just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this right now. And so you still continue because, you know, you're still like, yeah, I can still function. It's not like this level yet. And then you realize, oh, oops, that was full blown. <laughs> oops. <laughs> so yeah, that tends to happen. It's not a discouragement. It's just something that I think people need to be aware of if it's, if the aim of it works well for them. And it definitely seems to with me. Okay. So now that I'm into this talk about Amavig, I want to get into this particular hypothesis that I have with the Amavig, which is why I think it's working so well with me. So as I mentioned in the start, for those of you on Facebook and YouTube, the hypothesis is basically because I never had migraines before I had IIH. I never had any type of headache problems except for when it came to a getting a sinus infection and having my sinuses plugged. That's actually a pretty good description of how a pressure headache actually feels like is when your sinuses get plugged and you just feel that pressure in your head. That's kind of what IIH feels like and kind of what it is like to experience but without the nasal congestion so yeah um this hypothesis so when i had iih the amount of pain that i was experiencing is not something i can describe um the one i really remember i was away from home and there was this pulsing in my head had i known that this pulsing wasn't supposed to be there with a severe headache, I probably would have went to the ER, but I didn't know. And I probably, looking back, I should have probably went to the ER with this one. But, okay, so it felt like my head was gonna explode. It felt like the worst pressure headache of your life. Plus I had the pulsing in my ears. Um, so this actually made me in so much pain. I didn't even want to eat that night. Like it was really bad. I'm trying to think back. I tried to put this out of my mind. Actually, it hurt so much. Um, okay. So that's the one headache that I really remember being really bad. It was way more than a headache, but just trying to use words that people are familiar with um okay so that was about that was in about may of 2018 so june july august september so it'd be another four months before i di got a definitive diagnosis that it was iih but may june it was about july that i had the mri done that actually led the doctors to the answer so it was only a couple months before diagnosis. I had no idea what was going on, but I had headaches like this a lot, especially after that first one in May. I'm gonna say that was the really, the first time where I really felt the pulsing, really felt the pain, 
but I don't remember anymore. Like I said, this is so long ago now, but I have no definitive way of proving this, but I started to get those types of headaches quite frequently. And what I wonder what happened was with the IIH being so painful, if it led to a sensitization of a molecule called CGRP. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the science on this, um, science, um, this is not related to that, but you know, I gotta wrap my nerdy merch. And this is not my merch, this is merch from uh, Z, Z Dog MD, who I am a supporter of. Um, but anyways, so just had to throw the science out there though but okay so amavig works on cgrp which cgrp is involved in pathways that involve pain and what they think actually is one hypothesis of what causes migraines and particularly i think for migraines to progress from just having a migraine occasionally to more chronic where you're getting them all the time is this molecule called CGRP, which is apparently increased in when people have migraines. Now getting into this, I think this molecule is increased in IIH as well. IIH actually, if you look at the symptoms of it, is very similar to a migraine headache. And I actually don't even like using the term headache when it comes to migraines, but when it comes to migraines, and when it comes to IIH, there's a lot of symptoms that are shared common. There are some different ones as well, but they're very similar. And they're very similar to experience too. There's a few differences in symptoms, but if you've had migraines after having IIH and never had migraines previously, it's hard to tell the difference. And you just assume that once your eyes are better that everything that you get is a migraine, which there are a few symptoms that I look out for, that I make sure are not coming back worse or more frequently. So for example, for me, double vision. Now I can get double vision in my um, kind of the pre aura phase or whatever, like it's in the first phase of the migraine. And then I can also get the double vision if I'm really tired. So if I don't sleep well, I can get double vision as well. But if the double vision becomes constant, that's when I'm gonna get concerned because that's what happened with the IIH before. And now that's not happening. It's just happening in the, usually right before the lead up to a migraine, I get double vision and I'm just like, okay, keep an eye on this. If it comes back completely, I might have a problem. But if I start to get pain or other symptoms after that, I know it's just, it, I say it's just a migraine, but it's not really just a migraine. If you ever hear me saying, oh, it's just a migraine, it's because I'm more worried about vision loss from IIH than I am about the symptoms of a migraine. So that's why I, you'll hear me say just a migraine, but that doesn't mean it's okay for you to say, oh, you're just having a migraine. You need to get on with life. You can't stay curled up in a ball all the time. Like I don't really like when people approach just a migraine and I don't like promoting that myself, but when it comes to IIH versus migraines and the fact that one threatens my vision, is something that I think is a really important thing to talk about. Okay, so moving on. With the sensitization of CGRP, I honestly wonder if what happened was with the IIH, if it ended up causing my migraines. Because I never had any type of headache problems before unless I had a sinus infection. I mentioned this a few times now. And I think that's really important for me to emphasize. I never had a problem with headaches before. I had never had a migraine before in my life. Now I'm at the age where you can develop them anyway, so they might not be related, but it's awfully suspicious. So I have no definitive way of proving that this is exactly how what led to my migraines, but I don't think it's completely out of this, out of the ballpark to even suggest it. And I would, this is where I'd like to say science needs to explore this more. And also another reason why science needs to explore this more is because patients particularly 
with IIH in the literature who have been given Amovig do really well. So I really wonder if there's a sensitization thing that's happening there and just being repeatedly exposed to increases of CGRP in this pain molecule can lead to what looks like a migraine but is actually the IIH. But sensitization and the CGRP is leading to what is like a migraine. Well, it may actually lead to migraines too, but like with the hypothesis that is already out there about migraines. Now, other people have migraines and they don't do well with Amovig or other anti-CGRP medication. So I think there's a lot more going on than just a sensitization to CGRP because it doesn't work well for everyone. Now, I wonder though, if, you know, people aren't given enough of a chance. I think a lot of places want you to try it for three months and notice a difference before you actually definitively make that decision of whether you want to continue on it. For me, with the Amovig, it's gotten better over time. And it, yeah, it helped after the first month or two or even three, but I'm, what now? I started, well, I had samples before I actually started the prescription. I would say it's been, I don't even remember how long I've been on the medication now, but I think it gets better every month. That's my hypothesis. That's that's what I've observed anyways. That's my anecdotal experience is that I don't think this thing has been given enough time in some people. And, you know, I get that the cost of it is there, but with how dramatic my experience has been, and I'm going to be using this as kind of my emphasis and goal for 2022. I really want people, particularly who have had IIH, to have access to Amovig, and it's not an easy drug to access, and the evidence is there for it to be working, the evidence is there that it helps. I have my own experience, but a lot of people aren't able to access this medication due to cost, and most governments won't even include it in their extended benefits because of the stigma associated with headache disorders. And this needs to change. Number one, this needs to change so that, you know, you don't need to power through a probationary period at a job to gain access to private insurance in order to be able to cover it. But number two, not everybody is able to even get past that point. So this medication needs to be covered. We could probably get a lot of lost productivity back to the economy, not only with helping people with migraines have access to Imavig, but for the people who also have IIH. But I think with having the migraines in particular, you'd help a lot more people. Having IIH and all of that is, is actually quite rare. IIH is a fairly rare condition. So it is increasing with the obesity epidemic. I'm not gonna get into the topic of weight right now because it's one of those that is sensitive, but it's definitely a thing and it's a thing that happened to me. But you know, the incidence of IIH is going up, but I'm telling you that there is a way of getting back some productivity if this is really what's going on. So I think with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. I hope that next week I can get this latest vlog out. It's going to include stuff that I've done over December as well as my side effects from my latest covid vaccine so yeah that's basically i think what i'm going to include i don't think i'm going to include much of christmas i never really vlog much christmas stuff because christmas is basically like my time to be with my family and i don't really like to have the cameras around so yeah um hoping to include some different lights and all of that some photos of things that we've done and also the COVID vaccine. And I think that'll be a fairly bulky video. So hope to see you for that vlog. Like I said, I'm hoping to get it out next weekend. So not this coming weekend with Christmas, but the following weekend after that, I might work on it on the weekend after all of the Christmas stuff is over. But yeah, we'll see.
but anyways that being said uh thanks for watching and hope to see you next time bye everyone all right so i'm just doing the description for the igtv now so that they can share it i hoping to get this video up today as well after i get my even maybe even before i get my booster done but anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed this particular video i know these aren't ideal with these live streams but that's why i strongly suggest that you catch me on instagram follow me on instagram so you can catch these live and follow me on twitter so that you know when i'll be going live on instagram i also share to the stories but if you want to follow that that's probably the best way to do this ideally i would have another camera so that it would be angled a little bit better as i've said before so yeah um actually though this one didn't turn out i don't think as bad it's just my ipad doesn't record in 1080p so you know oh the vlogs will be in 4k but the live streams will only be in 780 or so no not 70 720p so yeah although i think the last one i uploaded in 1080 and i think it turned out okay so yeah but anyways guys i will see you hopefully next week for that vlog and i hope you have a very merry christmas if you celebrate that hopefully you take this time to spend with your loved ones and family all right so I'll see you in the next one bye for now and have a good one enjoying my content don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming future videos. Bye for now, and thanks for watching.